So the Supreme Court recently issued a unanimous decision which found that social media companies cannot be held liable for actions of third-party criminals. This decision also shows how gun manufacturers and gun stores should never be held liable for third-party criminal actions. So let's talk about this. Also quickly, I wanna mention that we're doing a quick pop-up event on May 30th, this upcoming Tuesday, and that is going to be in Huntington Beach in the Orange County area, and it's gonna be with Rifle Supply. So again, just a quick pop-up event, come hang out at the shop. Uh, they're gonna be doing sales on items. I'm gonna be there, we're gonna be doing a live podcast, kind of like a meet and greet, Q&A, stuff like that. So if you're interested, uh, head out to Rifle Supply. I'd love to see you guys there. And again, that's gonna be May 30th. Doors open at 10 o'clock, and I'm pretty much gonna be there all day. As I mentioned in the intro, in this video, we're gonna be talking about a unanimous decision issued by the Supreme Court this month. The cases we're gonna be breaking down are a Twitter case and then also Gonzalez v. Google. Although this decision and these cases do not deal directly with the Second Amendment, it does have serious implications for future 2A cases and the current attempts by President Biden, anti-gun organizations, to, and other groups to sue gun manufacturers and gun dealers out of existence. In this case, the Supreme Court, in their unanimous decision, found that social media companies like Twitter, Facebook, and Google cannot be held liable for aiding and abetting in the actions of third-party criminals. In this decision, Justice Thomas, writing for the majority, actually found that Twitter and Google did not knowingly provide substantial assistance under 18 U.S.C. sections 2333 and therefore cannot be said to have aided and abetted the criminal actions that occurred at a nightclub in Turkey. This unanimous decision by the Supreme Court shows that if social media companies cannot be held liable for similar actions of third-party criminals, then gun manufacturers also should never be held liable. Now, I'm going to break down some of the facts of this case, but I also have to skirt around some of the words and avoid using some specific words. If you want more context about actually what this case deals with, um, I will leave a link down below to the decision by the Supreme Court. But generally in 2017, an individual carried out an attack in Riyana nightclub, which was in Istanbul, Turkey, on behalf of an international criminal organization. There were multiple casualties because of the attack, and as a result, multiple families of those victims sued the social media companies, various social media sites, including Twitter, Facebook, and Google. The plaintiffs invoked a remedy under a federal statute, which the plaintiffs allege permitted them to sue three of the largest social media companies in the world. The plaintiffs claimed that these social media companies were liable for aiding and abetting the actions of that attacker. In the Google lawsuit, the plaintiffs made similar allegations, but also they alleged that they should be able to pierce a key federal liability shield for websites known as Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. The Communication Decency Act was originally passed in 1996 during the early arrival of the internet. By passing the law, Congress determined that websites cannot be treated as publishers of online content and cannot be held liable for content moderation decisions taken concerning material that the provider or user considers to be obscene, lewd, filthy, or, you know, essentially those bad things that you may see on the internet. They can't be held liable for those. And really, it is this provision that then paved the way for the reality um, that we live in right now with a generally free internet. Uh, again, not a completely free internet, but a generally free internet where these social media companies and these websites are not generally held liable for the actions that appear on their sites. Now on review, a district court dismissed the complaint against Google for failure to state a claim. And then also the Ninth Circuit on review affirmed that dismissal. But then a can of worms was essentially opened in a Twitter lawsuit because the Ninth Circuit on review reversed the Twitter lawsuit dismissal. And because of that, that also opened up once again the question of the Google lawsuit. And these cases then made their way up to Supreme Court. But the fear with these lawsuits originally was that if social media companies became liable for every piece of content that is posted on their platforms, that would then lead them to be even more aggressive in removing certain content. Fortunately, the Supreme Court on review issued a unanimous 9-0 decision authored by Justice Thomas finding that Twitter and these other companies could not be held liable for aiding and abetting in third-party criminal conduct only because that individual used their platform. In the decision, the Supreme Court found that to aid and abet requires three key elements. First, the party whom the defendant aids must perform a wrongful act 
that causes an injury. Second, the defendant must be generally aware of his role as part of an illegal activity at the time he provides assistance. And three, the defendant must knowingly and substantially assist the principal violation. The Supreme Court found that the plaintiffs failed to show that the defendants here, the social media companies, gave such knowing and substantial assistance to the crime which occurred. The court found without more evidence, the plaintiffs claimed that Twitter aided and abetted the actions of that criminal must therefore fail. Justice Thomas stated that a contrary conclusion would effectively hold any sort of communications provider liable for any sort of wrongdoing merely for knowing that the wrongdoers were using its services and failing to stop them. Some level of blameworthiness is therefore ordinarily required. But again, if aiding and abetting liability were taken too far, then ordinary merchants could become liable for any misuse of their goods and services, no matter how attenuated their relationship with the wrongdoer. And those who merely deliver mail or transmit emails could be liable for torturous messages contained therein. For these reasons, courts have long recognized the need to cabin aiding and abetting liability to cases of truly culpable conduct. Now, you may be asking yourself, how does this tie into the Second Amendment context? Well, over the last few years, we have seen renewed calls by the anti-gun side to try and hold gun manufacturers and gun dealers liable for the third-party conduct of criminals. President Biden has been a huge proponent of suing gun makers and gun manufacturers for crimes that happen with their products. Also, Biden is a big proponent of repealing the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act, also known as the PLCAA. The PLCAA is a U.S. law that protects firearms manufacturers and dealers from being held liable when crimes are committed with their products. One important thing to keep in mind, though, is that these companies under the PLCAA, these dealers, can still be held liable for damages resulting from defective products, breach of contract, and also their own criminal conduct. You often hear people like Biden and the anti-gun side say that gun manufacturers are the only industry immune from liability, and that's simply not true. Ford cannot be sued because a drunk driver commits an accident while driving drunk in an F-150. You can't sue at the uh, Ford company because of that. And as we see here in this recent Supreme Court Twitter unanimous decision, social media companies are also not liable for people using their platforms in furtherance of a crime. Biden loves to say that the gun industry is the only industry that is immune, but as we see in this 9-0 decision by the Supreme Court, that's simply not true. The standard across the board is that all companies are immune unless the companies knowingly aid and abet in that action. But that fact has not prevented states from trying to pass state-level negligent marketing laws and public nuisance laws in a, an attempt essentially to circumvent the PLCA and to sue gun makers and gun manufacturers into oblivion. Also, we have seen multiple lawsuits pop up against gun manufacturers, including a Mexico lawsuit where Mexico is suing gun makers in the U.S. But the language we see in this Twitter decision by the Supreme Court should not just apply to social media companies, but it also applies to firearms manufacturers and should further be used as support to show that these gun makers, these gun manufacturers should never be held liable for the actions of a third party criminal. The PLCA is supposed to protect gun makers, similar to how we see the Communications Decency Act, supposed to protect social media companies like Twitter, Facebook, and Google. So this is a really interesting decision where the Supreme Court was unanimous in their decision, 9-0 in their decision. Now, I think if a challenge to the PLCAA and a challenge on gun manufacturers eventually made its way up before the Supreme Court, I doubt the left-leaning justices would then jump on board. I think they're much more likely to jump on board when you're dealing with something like Twitter, Facebook, and Google. So we will see if the Supreme Court decision now pops up in some of these PLCA lawsuits. But if you guys want to learn more about what's going on in the two-way world, you can watch these videos here on the screen. But as always, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And never forget, this nation was built by armed scholars, and this nation will be maintained by armed scholars.